subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button tag tv us canada brings you news and views from white house and state department good afternoon everyone I just spoke with the president and he wanted to thank the commissioner of Big Ten football, Kevin Warren, and all of the players, parents, coaches, and fans who wanted more than anything to play football. Uh, the president was happy to get this thing going, and now you will have players in Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Ohio, Iowa, Indiana, Illinois. Uh, Minnesota, Mississippi, um, and Nebraska, who will now have access to uh, football, which is very good to see. Transitioning to a much more somber topic and one that is very important to the president, um, I want to talk a little bit about our police officers. 14 months ago, two deputies with the Los Angeles Pol Police Department were sworn in to protect and serve their community. This past Saturday, these two deputies were ambushed. While sitting in their patrol car in Compton, California, a suspect approached the passenger side window, took aim and fired multiple shots at point blank range into the patrol car. I've been shot, send help, begged one of the deputies over 911. This was a cowardly, brazen and unprovoked attack against law enforcement. One of the deputies attacked was a 31 year old mother of a six year old boy. She was seen on security footage attending to the wounds of her partner, despite being shot in the jaw and arm herself. She is a true hero. Rushed to the hospital, these two deputies were targeted yet again. The LA County sheriffs tweeted this, to the protesters blocking the entrance and exit of the hospital emergency room, yelling, we hope they die, referring to two LA sheriffs ambushed today in Compton. They said this, do not block emergency entries and exits to the hospital. People's lives are at stake. Truly despicable behavior from those protesters. People's lives are indeed at stake. It is truly, quote, a double miracle, as the Los Angeles Sheriff Alex Villanueva described it, that these two deputies are alive today. Targeting a police officer is an assault against your community. It is an assault against law and order. It is antithetical to what we value as Americans. We all remember the disastrous impact of the Ferguson effect. We do not want to see a repeat today. Defund the police is not just dangerous policy, it is a poisonous ideology. We must respect our police, not revolt against them. In the past 24 hours alone, we've seen law enforcement targeted across the country. This is in 24 hours. In Phoenix, in Phoenix a US Marshal was ambushed and shot outside a federal courthouse in a drive-by shooting. In Linwood, California, a suspect approached a patrol car and fired a handgun into the passenger side window. In Suffolk, Virginia, a suspect opened fire on a marked police car, hitting the vehicle three times. This is within 24 hours. These acts are despicable. Rhetoric such as defund the police is likely to have negative consequences for law enforcement across the country, threatening the safety of our communities. As Los Angeles Sheriff Villanueva warned, the ambush in Compton is a, quote, sober reminder. It's a dangerous job. Actions, words have consequences, he said. Our, our job does not get any easier because people do not like law enforcement. It pisses me off, he said. It dismays me at the same time. There's no pretty way to say it. The president wants law and order, which is the best way to ensure peace on our streets. And he wants our police to be respected and protected. And with that, I'll take questions. Okay. Yes, Haley, thank you so much. I have two questions, if you don't mind. The first one is about masks. Um, this morning, CDC Director Robert Redfield testified that masks are more guaranteed to protect people from COVID than a vaccine. Last night, the president continued to question their use. So why is he sending mixed messages about something that doctors say can save lives? And the president um, has always supported mask wearing um, and he's made many comments to that effect from this podium. Uh, yesterday he was uh, pointing to a quote that even Dr. Fauci has noted, which is that masks can have unintended consequences while we support wearing them and it's patriotic to do so. The unintended consequences can be inappropriate usage, touching the mask and then going on and touching something else. So the president very vividly described uh, that unintended consequence that can come if not worn appropriately. Okay. Uh, and secondly, on September 3rd, you said 
The herd immunity so-called theory was something made up by the fanciful minds of the media. That was never something that was ever considered here at the White House. But last night, the president um, said that the country would eventually achieve herd mentality, I believe he meant immunity, to explain how the virus would, quote, go away. So did the White House shift its position about this in the past two weeks since you made those comments? And what is the position about using it as a strategy. Herd immunity has never been a strategy here at the White House. Uh, the president last night um, was noting herd immunity um, is over a period of time, a country, a society can reach herd immunity. It's a fact. It was not a strategy ever presented here at the White House. And in fact, he went on in that very same um, exchange to say with a vaccine, this will go away very quickly, noting our strategy is to get a vas vaccine. And we will do so um, at the fastest rate for a novel pathogen. So he doesn't agree with Dr. Atlas his view that everyone should just catch it and then we'll move on. That's not Dr. Atlas's view. Dr. Atlas, I'm with him every day. He's never proposed herd immunity as a strategy, uh, nor has the president. John. Uh, a couple of other questions on COVID, if I could. Have, have any uh, members of White House staff recently tested positive for coronavirus? Um, I don't share um, people's personal medical information. But we have had, we have heard in the past when that has been the case, why the change? I, I've seen the reporting out there, but again, I'm not here to give people's personal identities. Um, in the past, when I've discussed a case, um, unfortunately, that individual's name was leaked to the media. Uh, okay, secondly, uh, something else that Dr. Redfield said was that while some people in high-risk categories may receive a vaccine by the end of the year, it would likely not be until the end of the second quarter or the third quarter before vaccinations were bi widely available. Is the president okay with that timeline or does he want to see a vaccine more widely available earlier than that? Um, we're still of the belief that we will um, have a vaccine by the end of the year. Um, Operation Warp Speed um, has made it clear that their goal is to have in more than 100 million doses. We're manufacturing in advance to make that a possibility. Right. Uh, so indicated that, but it was the idea of the vaccine being more widely available, like a flu vaccine, not until possibly next summer or, or maybe even early fall. We do believe that it will be widely available by the end of the year. Um, it's why we partnered with Sanofi, GSK, Pfizer, and now Johnson & Johnson with the billion dollar contracts uh, to manufacture 100, 100 million doses. So we still feel that we're on the right timeline. When you say widely available, do you mean to everyone or just people in high risk groups? I'm not going to engage in a hypothetical, but it's our goal to have at least um, 100 million in production um, by the end of the year. Yes. I have two questions. You said that the president was talking about wearing a mask improperly last night, touching it, referring to what Dr. Fauci has said. But he said, quote, there are people that don't think masks are good. That's clearly not what the CDC director thinks, since he said today that masks are important, powerful public health tool we have. They could be even more protective against COVID than a vaccine. So have any medical experts told the president that masks aren't good, or is he only citing non-medical experts like he did last night? He's referring to the fact that when used appropriately, um, they can have unintended consequences, much like what Dr. Fauci said. Um, it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is, and oftentimes there are unintended consequences. So the president agrees with Dr. Fauci that uh, mask wearing is good. It's recommended. The president's continually recommended it from this podium, but he was just pointing out some of the unintended consequences if not used appropriately. He didn't say that. He just said there are people no, who think masks are Do you have his whole exchange? Would you like to read it out? There, I mean, I watched it last night. There, he went and talked about... don't think masks are good. He didn't he, say improperly or anything like that. He went on in a very... Unfortunately, a bunch of you are very keen on doing selective editing of the president's quotes and not referring to the second half. Directly under that statement, he talked about a waiter touching the mask, then touching a plate, and that being an unintended effect of wearing a mask. That is an example of a mask not being yeah, used appropriately. don't think masks are good. But and he, 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 described, he described the exact scenario in which a mask could have an unintended consequence if not used appropriately. And we can send you the clip. We'll put it up on Twitter no, for you. It's OK. Um, I just wanted to see if there's any medical experts who have said that. Um, on and they the have, and I just read Dr. Fauci's quote, so go ahead. Yes, I've read Dr. Fauci's quote. Um, on the health care plan, the chief of staff said today that there is going to be one unveiled before the election, the one that the president has been promising for over a year now, long before then. But today on Capitol Hill, the three top medical experts in this administration said they have no idea of any kind of plan that's being formulated. 
So who is it that is working on the health care plan that's going to be introduced before the election? So here at the White House, um, we have a wide array of people working on it. Um, there have been elements of it that have already come out, like the telemedicine plan, uh, the drug importation EO, the most favored nations were elements of what is an overarching plan. Um, there's more that will be forthcoming. Um, and in aggregate, um, it, it's going to be a very comprehensive um, strategy, one where we're saving health care while Democrats are trying to take health care away, um, where we're making health care better and cheaper, guaranteeing protections for people with pre-existing conditions, stopping surprise, medical billing, in increasing transparency, uh, defending the right to keep your doctor in your plan, fighting lobbyists and special interests, and making healthier um, and fi making finding cures um, to diseases. And those are the principles um, that will animate multiple stakeholders here at the White House um, who work on policy. So our domestic policy council and others are working on a health care plan. Not the CDC yes. director, not Bob yes. Cadillac, not Admiral Jawar. None of them have any idea about the health care plan. I'm not plan. going to give you a readout of what our health care plan looks like and who's I'm working on it. If you want to know, if you want to know, come work here at the White House. Yes. No, I just wanted to know who's working on it. Yes. Stakeholders here in the White House. And as I told you, our Domestic Policy Council and others in the White House are working on a health care plan, the President's vision for the next five years. And yes, and if you want more, come join us here. Yes. Uh, thank that's you. not the point why I asked the question. Yes. I think you know that. Okay, uh, I've called on you four times. So, who else? Mario, thank go ahead. Uh, thanks, Kaylee. Uh, when should we expect the President to make a decision on TikTok? And to what degree is that decision delayed by just disagreement among his senior advisors? Yes, yeah, so you'll have a decision um, here in short order. I'm not going to get too far into it because I don't want to get ahead of the president, but obviously we care deeply about protecting uh, the data and security of American citizens. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Two questions. One is, is about uh, vaccines. Some people within the Trump administration indicate that there might be a vaccine within a few weeks. Right now we're all being tested for COVID. Are, there gonna, are you going to require vaccine that we'd be vaccinated to enter the White House complex? I'm not going to get ahead of any hypothetical. Um, right now, we're hard at work at actually getting the vaccine. Um, and then plans for distribution will be determined um, thereafter. There were some guidelines put out today to that effect about how they'll be distributed by HHS and DOD. Okay, okay. and also, one thing is that Bob Woodward said that uh, the president's response to COVID was, quote, a monumental, catastrophic leadership failure. That's, that this is a tragedy for Trump and for the country. What is your response to that? Um, that it's absolutely preposterous and absurd. Um, look at the facts, look at the data, look at the fact that um, Europe, for instance, has experienced a 28% higher excess mortality rate than the United States. Look at the fact that we have one of the lowest case fatalities in the world. Look at the fact that from scratch, we developed the largest and most advanced testing system in the entire world, testing more than every country in Europe put together and more than every nation in the Western Hemisphere combined. Look at the fact that we have three vaccines and phase three clinical trial. Uh, that is a historic response, mobilizing the private sector the fastest, or, or mobilizing the private private sector to the greatest degree since World War II. Uh, this president has broken through barriers. He's a businessman. He's the commander in chief. He's the leader of the country. And he has done a phenomenal job, to quote none, none other than Governor Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, I was simply letting yes. a colleague finish. Can I ask my question? No, I'm not going to reward not speaking up and asking your question. Go ahead. Anyone else? Uh, we... Yes. I'm going gonna... to go ahead. OK, thanks. Um, the president said on Twitter today that Republicans should go for a much higher number when it comes to the stimulus. What did he mean by that exactly? And has he spoken to Senator McConnell or uh, Speaker Pelosi about what number? Yeah, so um, what the president was referring to was the $500 billion bill that uh, passed the Senate, um, the phase four plan um, that didn't include, excuse me, it didn't, uh, it got 50 votes in the Senate. Um, it's that $500 billion skinny proposal, but it didn't include direct payments. So he wants more than the $500 billion, and he is very keen to see these direct stimulus payments. And we hope that uh, Nancy Pelosi will work with us in good faith. Um, there are many bipartisan proposals out there uh, that have merit. Um, and a clear example of where Nancy stands is that everyone um, wants to be in, in D.C., seems to want to make a deal, except Nancy 
Pelosi. She wants to play politics. Look at the letter um, she wrote condemning the Problem Solvers Group proposal. That was a $1.5 trillion plan uh, that if the priorities were modified and made sure that there was not bailout that bailed out states um, that didn't have COVID-related issues, um, that just were blanket bailouts to blue states, uh, that's something that we would entertain and look at. But Nancy Pelosi immediately uh, decried that proposal in a letter because she's not interested in a deal. Yes. Hey, could I just ask really briefly, uh, following up on Mario's question, you know, Trump has said that uh, he wants to see TikTok's U.S. operations being sold to a U.S. company. And our reporting suggests that under a proposal submitted to CFIUS, ByteDance would retain a majority stake in TikTok. So does the president still want TikTok to be sold to a U.S. company? Or is he now with, okay with TikTok potentially remaining under Chinese ownership? Yeah, this is an ongoing negotiation, and I'm not going to offer any further comment uh, beyond any of the president's public remarks. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I pulled up a TikTok quote that you were talking about. The president said last night, they come over, they serve you, he's talking about waiters, and they have a mask. I saw it the other day where they were serving me, they were playing with the mask, I'm not blaming them, I'm just saying it happens. And then he starts talking about Dr. Fauci. My question is, why is he quoting what Dr. Fauci's guidance from like five months ago instead of what the head of the CD said in the Senate today on masks? Well, both propositions he agrees with. And thank you very much for reading the second part of the quote. Um, first, um, he agrees with the consensus that mask wearing is important and recommended. Um, I have here, and I'll make sure you all get a copy all of the times he said that uh, from this podium, and I can read them, but it would probably bore you. He's called it patriotic to wear a mask. But he also recognizes that masks need to be worn appropriately, which is the point Dr. Fauci was making. Um, he was making that point in March, but it was an important point to make, that we should all wear our mask appropriately. And then it's totally Unrelated, but Roger Stone said on, on a radio show the other day, he said U.S. Marshals should, should seize the ballots in Nevada on election day because he's called them corrupted. Is that something the president is comfortable with using federal power to seize ballots during the count? I have not spoken to him about that, nor do I think he's ever seen those comments. Yes, uh, yes if, if you'll allow me, I have a question from a colleague because I'm cooler today and then I'd like to ask my own. Uh, from a colleague, in lifting tariffs on Canadian aluminum, the USTR announced yesterday it would review shipment levels six weeks after the end of September, a timeline that extends beyond the election. Was the president worried that the, those tariffs and the anticipated retaliatory action from Canada would endanger his reelection chances? Um, I've not spoken to the president about Canadian tariffs. Um, I haven't followed up on that matter. What was your other question? The second one is, does the president have any evidence to back up his suggestions that Joe Biden is a pedophile or taking drugs? And without such evidence, um, if he's simply speculating, why should the public trust him on anything else? I'd have to refer you to the campaign. I'm not here to talk about Joe Biden. Yes. Thank you, Kaylee. With Hurricane Sally making landfall in Alabama and hitting the Florida panhandle, a couple of questions here related to that. Has the president spoken directly to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis or any of the other governors affected by this storm? And at the same time, has the federal government made any changes to its programs since Hurricane Michael or the way it communicates with the state of Florida? Yeah, I haven't um, asked the president about um, who he's called specifically. I know the White House, I've f um, spoken with IGA, I know the White House has certainly been in contact and the chief of staff. Um, but in terms of um, the hurricane, um, we this president is engaging um, in a, an important response. FEMA is active. We have high water rescue teams, IMAT teams, disaster medical assistance, generators, 1.8 million meals, um, 1.5 million bottles of water. Um, and as FEMA administrator Gaynor, has said we are coordinating with the states right now. We have a significant footprint in Louisiana because of Hurricane Laura, so we are well postured. We're leaning into it to make sure that we meet all the, need, all the needs of all three of those states. Are you aware, though, of any changes since Hurricane Michael that are being uh, applied to this specific response? I've not looked at changes with hurricane response, but uh, this president um, knows how to respond um, and will do so and protect the men and women of those three states. Hey, I also have the transcript from last night. I just wanted to ask you about one other line and get okay. clarification. The president did say there are a lot of people that think masks are not good. Who are the people he's referring to? The lot of people. He, he's just meaning that they're not, there are people who think they're not good when not used appropriately, as I've mentioned several times in this briefing. Yes. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, two questions, if I may. One is, I, I suppose, has to be a hypothetical, but if, if someone who was at the uh, ceremony the other day for the signing of the, uh, the accords 
tested positive for coronavirus subsequently, would everyone who was present at the signing of the accords be notified through contact tracing? We, we do contact tracing, so close contacts are always notified. And uh, secondly, on the uh, stimulus questions, uh, where are you on additional assistance for airlines and maybe more of the pandemic unemployment insurance since both of those things are urgent priorities and it doesn't look like Congress is going to act. Uh, what's the president prepared to do on both of those issues? The president has um, mentioned previously that um, he wanted to take a good look at airlines um, and help where he can. Of course, we need Congress in a lot of this. He's always made clear that his his big priority, number one, is unemployed Americans um, and Americans who have been hurt by this pandemic. His EO really clarified um, his priorities, the four EOs on eviction um, and the payroll tax, which helps low and middle income Americans primarily, um, and unemployment insurance and student loan debt relief. That's his priority, um, unlike Nancy Pelosi, who took a vacation and went to a hair salon when the men and women of San Francisco did not have the access that she did. Can I follow up on yes. payroll taxes, actually? Sure. You mentioned payroll taxes. Is, is the president disappointed with the large number of employers who are not taking up uh, him and the Treasury Secretary on the payroll tax deferral? The president believes that companies should take him up on that. He has um, always said that he is interested in giving a payroll tax forgiveness um, for those who um, do participate because it's very important um, that those making less than $100,000 have this um, relief at this time. Raquel. Okay, we can do two questions, if I may. One, is the White House aware of the allegations of health care abuse in ICE detention centers? Yeah, I have not um, followed up on that. I'd have to refer you to DHS. I did see that report just before coming out here, but I'd refer you to DHS. Okay, another question. A new survey uh, showed that the image of the U.S. in the world is the worst in 20 years, and President Trump is less trusted than Putin or Xi Jinping after COVID response. So why do you think many countries don't trust President Trump right now? Um, look, this president has led the greatest response um, to COVID. I've already walked through how well we're doing vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. Also worth noting, um, U.S., we had the smallest economic contraction of any major Western country in the first half of the year. Um, also want to note that in 2019, real median household income grew by more. This is last year alone. Real median household income grew by more than all eight years of Obama-Biden. Um, and in 2019, so last Last year, real median household income for African Americans uh, rose 8%, and that is more than double the gains um, of Obama Biden in eight years. Um, so, this president has led economically, he's led on COVID, and when you look at what he did just yesterday with these landmark uh, peace agreements um, that haven't been done in a quarter of a century, but President Trump made it happen, uh, he is a great diplomat, a great peacemaker, and I think him being nominated for two Nobel Prizes says it all. Yes. Yeah, just, on, just can I ask you on the great success story you've talked about about COVID. In the richest country in the world, you have 4% of the global population and 24% of the coronavirus deaths. How is that a success story? Yeah, when you look at, again, we have um, Europe has 28% higher excess mortality rate. No, look and at the global numbers that I'm giving you, which is 4% of the population, 24% of the deaths from COVID, isn't that, a, how can yeah, that be a and success? I'm, and I'm giving you the numbers that we believe are very indicative of where we stand vis-a-vis -vis the re rest of the world. Excess mortality is an indicator that takes into account the percent deaths above what would occur uh, without a pandemic. Um, it counts the excess mortality. Um, and what we see is that we are 28% under Europe. You have to look at this holistically. You have to look at total and yeah, aggregate so um, how many deaths have occurred in this country and compare that um, to Europe in the excess mortality rate and case fatality um, and testing. We have exceeded in our response, um, and this president is very proud of the great work that this administration has done. Yes. I do more, yeah. Is Michael Caputo welcome back after his 60-day leave after urging his followers on Facebook to stock up on ammunition? I'm not going to weigh into any personnel matters. As you know, um, he has taken a leave of absence that was announced just before I came out here. Um, but what I will weigh into is the Middle East peel, um, the Middle East peace deal signed yesterday that I did not receive a single question about. That was the first time it's happened in a quarter of 
a century, if Obama and Biden had achieved this, um, there would look a lot different. Uh, you wouldn't have Chuck Todd saying he's uncomfortable with the deal that brings peace between the United Arab Emirates and Israel and Bahrain. Um, you wouldn't have C CBS calling it, quote, a business deal. And you wouldn't have Nancy Pelosi calling it a distraction. Uh, maybe it's a distraction from her visits to the hair salon, but those were significant agreements. First time in a quarter of a century, three peace deals in 29 days. Took 26 years uh, for the prior two peace deals. So this, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize nomination for the president, two of them, um, very well deserved. Thank you.